Boston CEO Lloyd Blankfein can expect a large dose of political theater when he testifies before a Senate subcommittee next Tuesday. That is the subject of the newly relaunched Bloomberg Businessweek magazine. It hits stands today. That's a look at the cover. For more on the story and some others, we are joined right now by the magazine's editor, Josh Tarangel. Josh, always glad to have you with us. It's our little, you know, Friday pick-me-up that you come in and hang out. I do what I can. I come caffeinated. <laughs> so Tuesday is going to be a pretty big day for Lloyd Blankfein. It's going to be a pretty big day for everybody who is near a TV screen. Yep. What are we likely to see? Well, I think, as you said, you're going to see some theater. And um, th this has been building up in the system for a couple of years. There's a lot of anger, particularly about Goldman Sachs. Um, so there will be some theatrics. At the same time, Carl Levin, who's the head of the, um, the, banking, of the investigation subcommittee, you know, he's not in Goldman's pocket. He's a serious guy. Uh, there are 10 committee members, uh, four of whom have accepted pretty large donations from Goldman. Pryor, Tester, Collins, and McCain. I, I, I got all four. So you um, think they're going to be tame? No, I, I don't think they're going to be tame. I think those guys may actually be uh, more aggressive because of that. But, but Levin is a serious, uh, Levin is a serious senator, and he, he's done a lot of pretty good work on the investigations committee. I think the questions will be hard hitting. I also think that uh, volume on the exchange, while Lloyd Blankfein is testifying, yeah, it's be will be quite right? slow. Just drip, drip, yeah, drip. I mean, you know, people, I think everyone knew that this was going to happen at some point. And so the fact that there's going to be this big theatrical moment where all of business is really focused, um, it should be quite interesting. H how do you think this is going to compare to the last time that Lloyd Blankfein made his way south? Well, you know, Angelides really went after him, and, and Blankfein yeah, I mean, there was did, quite a heated exchange there yeah, for a while. And, and Blankfein certainly bristled at, at some of it. I mean, let's, you know, Lloyd Blankfein is an incredibly smart and very politic guy. Um, so I don't think there are going to be any traps. I don't think that there's anything obvious that he's going to get upset about or fall into. At the same time, you really want to see this intellectual sparring happen. Um, and, you know, he's not the only one. And you're saying one. the sub Senate subcommittee is prepared and ready to go on I, I think Levin is actually quite prepared. That's what we're hearing is that, um, you know, he's approached this methodically. Uh, he's talked to all the right people. He has a very specific area of what focus. What do you think their goal is, Josh? What do you think the golden soundbite is for them, for Lloyd Blankfein to say? For the Senate? Yeah. Well, I think for the Senate, the golden soundbite is, you guys are right, and we are wrong, and we are going to change. Right. And that's, that's not going to happen. That's not what he's going to say. And, and really what they want is to look tough. I mean, anybody who's watched any of these committee investigations, particularly when there's a swearing in, which is a purely theatrical trick, it amps up the drama, and the senators look serious and tough and like they're outraged on behalf of the American people and I'm not trying to be cynical about it this is stuff we actually know is going to happen and it's not to say there, there won't be something meaningful like out of it. They're listening to the Rocky theme. Well, they, they, they might well be a Rocky, a little eight mile, something to get themselves amped up but it's, it's not to say there's nothing serious that could come out of it there's always that possibility but we do know that this is a very big moment particularly when the Senate and, and elected officials are feeling anger um, from the rest of the country. And so we talked about that side. What about Lloyd Blankfein? I mean, what's his best sort of MO? Does he just be kind of cool, calm, and composed and say, look, you know, we're running a business? Yeah, and, and I think Goldman has a couple of uh, actually very good defenses. One, um, as we reported a couple of weeks ago, you know, when they suspected there was even anything at all wrong um, with subprime, 10 senior executives suddenly got just descended on the mortgage unit. And so what they can say is, look, you know, this is they one bad apple. They started an internal investigation. They did. And they can say, look, fabulous fab, that's one bad apple. We weeded it out. And, you know, this is not I, a company wide I know, but problem. Josh, speaking about being cynical, sure. it's really hard to think that one VP in London was responsible. Well, that, that's certainly what a lot of people are saying. And, you know, the, the other defense that Goldman has is, look, you know, the notion that um, we're selling to people who are ignorant about what they're buying is ridiculous. At the time that we were packaging this, you know, a simple Google search would have turned up the fact that John Paulson was short and was short in a big way, that there were 300 stories. So it, it will be interesting. I don't think that this is a very clear cut case on either side. Um, so, you know, the, just hearing that debate is going to be fascinating. I know that uh, everyone in my office will be stopping to watch. No, I'm sure. And I mean, as you say, too, you know, the idea that IKB, ACA are not, uh, you know, widows and orphans. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're, they're, as John Weil writes in our, in our cover piece, you know, it's not exactly that there are a bunch of sympathetic victims in this particular case. And so that's why it's such a smart case <laughs> um, and such a tough one.